Hey everybody, uh, this is Jamie Stark. Uh, welcome to our inaugural 2016 Skype for Business uh, broadcast. I'm joined here by Sean Wilson, my colleague. Sean, good to see you. Good to see you. Happy New Year. Happy, Happy New Year to everybody else. Happy New Year to you too as well. I, I, I can't help to notice the professional attire that you <laughs> that you worked so hard to, uh, to to bring to our broadcast. Hey, you know you got to <laughs> we got to support our local teams everywhere we can. It's Blue Friday. Go Hawks! And, uh, you know, we're second round, so let's uh, let's see what we can do. For those of you that don't know, Blue Friday is a thing that has started up in the greater Seattle metro area where um, when there's Seahawks games, even, you know, random preseason, you know, games that don't mean anything, everyone uh, shows up and, and wears, their, wears their colors, as it were, their jerseys to, uh, to work. So, yeah. Um, yeah, good stuff. No, super, super excited for the game and... Uh, and looking forward to uh, looking forward to a fun weekend. Um, it's been busy already. I'm coming back from the holidays. Oh, oh wow. my goodness! I'll have to admit, um, I'm a little tired from working on web copy until yeah. very late last night. Yeah. <laughs> um, just a lot of stuff that has been uh, that's been kind of coming to fruition. Um, that we we kind of got done in December. Then we had we had a nice holiday break, and now we're kind of coming back. And uh, and while the MythBusters have disproved. The, the ability to actually hit the ground running as a thing um, that actually doesn't help you kind of get going faster. We have hit the ground running, and we're uh, we're doing we're doing a lot of good stuff here. Typically, when you hit the ground running, you just trip. <laughs> so, so uh, our whole point on this one is, hey, let's not hit it running. Let's let's let's, see it. let's catch speed quickly, and uh, we are we're we're at full tilt. Um, we've got a very full year uh, ahead of us. Um, so speaking of the full year ahead of us, uh, Sean and I had a chance to get together. It was last week. Um, first, to decide whether or not we started this series last Friday or we would start it today, um, we clearly made the decision to start it today because we just weren't ready. Yes, <laughs> there's a lot. There's still a lot of catching up to do from the uh, from the holiday and so forth. But um, but what we did do is go through and 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 scrum a giant list of stuff. Yeah. Like so, I, I've got it. I've got it here in front of me on my workstation. Um, PSTN trial with E5, uh, Microsoft IT and Skype for Business deployment, Surface Hub unboxing, um, doing an ROI, kind of our business value assessment, um, PowerShell fundamentals, advanced PowerShell, which yeah. we'll have to. I think I think we'll have to we'll, scale up on a little bit. Well, we'll have to actually probably bring someone in that actually knows more than. Oh me. no, that, that, that's, that's a good idea. Yeah. yeah. So uh, yeah, absolutely. So we we may be looking for a PowerShell Wrangler um, here in a little bit. But there's uh, there's a whole lot of uh, of just ideas that we've had um, for different uh, for different sessions and for different. And um, don't forget about our entire networking series, right? One hundred, one hundred one, one hundred two, and one hundred three. Um, a lot of it is because, you know, one of the challenges we always think about is, is what's the complexity of the network, and, and it's not just about network. So one of the conversations we had was, hey, we should do a networking 101, and then we went to the next topic, and we're like, well, wait a second, we need, we need to take it to the next level and then keep going. So, I mean, it includes everything from 101 all the way up to SDN to, you know, the media delivery network. So let's, let's uh, you'll see those come out through the year. As well, we will always bring anything that's new or pressing to the table uh, to keep this as fresh and live as possible. Speaking of new or pressing, where's the Mac client? <laughs> <laughs> that actually wasn't planned. I totally know that was that much, Sean. <laughs> I have no idea. I, I own deployment, which is what we're going to talk about today. The so. reason the reason I'm making that joke is that there's clearly we work on the Mac client. We did a broadcast a couple. Um, a couple sessions ago, our colleague, uh, our colleague Paul was up here with his engineering counterpart talking about the Mac client. They had some, they had some great um, screenshots of the Mac client. A lot of that work continues to be in progress. It continues to be, um, be, be happening at the same rate. If you want to get the details, um, go on to our, go on to our YouTube channel. We'll put the link up in, um, up in Yammer and I'll throw it up on Twitter as well. Um, go and check out that session. They did a fantastic job. Everything is still happening on track. The fact that we don't have any news about the back client. It just means that everyone is cranking away at it. It's all good. So, so, so we're we're doing fine there. Like we will let you know when the next thing happens, which will probably be some type of early availability. So. Yeah, totally. And and <laughs> one of the things to also keep. So uh, most of you are actually part of our gamer community. We will continue to keep that updated as well. Um, 
it, we'll post on the at the at the end. We'll post uh, when we do the broadcast on YouTube. We'll make sure that it, we have the Yammer uh, community in that that broadcast as well. Speaking of the Yammer community, um, I've I've been really I've been really excited to see the level of engagement that's um, that's been going out here. I want to throw out uh, one shout out to Joe Cesaro, who um yes. who, who just had a post this morning. I'm um, talking about, hey, you know, I've got I've got a need where um, I, I do an update or I, or I do some work in my deployment. And I want to have some yeah. folks be able to test that kind of do a pure, uh, you know, authentic, unauthenticated yeah. outside my, my network kind of test. Are there folks out there that can help me do that? Now, um, that's the sort of stuff I just love. I love seeing the community like being able to be able to step up, help each other out, provide answers. Um, there's a lot of times that I'll see. Now, um, cloud PBX and different, you know, E5 questions pop up. And I just don't have a chance to get to the answer. But by the time I do, a couple hours later, like there's already a great discussion happening. Yeah, in the exactly. It's just fantastic. Yeah, you know, one of the things that we always wanted was, hey, you know, we're we're a team of just a few, um, while you are a community of many, and the ability for you to learn from each other is actually more valuable than us telling it. It's like. I use the example of, uh, of of my son who comes to me and says, hey, what does such and such mean? And I said, go look it up in the dictionary because, you know, that's what our parents told us to do, right? And my son goes, well, we don't have a dictionary. And then I said, well, guess what? We're going to go get one. So we went and bought a dictionary. But it's the same concept because we want you to teach others and to learn because that will propagate and bring better value than just from us so yeah, yeah, so the community the value of community exists just beyond learning in in through generations across the world right so it's not just about technology and there's and there's just so many so many cases where folks have tribal knowledge about actual you know real deployment you know things that they've run into and you know, like, like clearly, we try to find out those things in in deployments that we're helping customers with, and we try to get those seeded throughout the community. But there's just a lot of that that type of information. Just sharing that around is is absolutely fantastic. And speaking of sharing information around the community, Sean, is there some news about a new resource that that may be available coming up here? Fairly soon. Oh, are you talking about what, what the 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 first acquisition of Microsoft? I've actually before that. Before that, I wanted to talk about NextHop. Uh, okay, well, so for those of you that are veterans and have been around for quite a while, we had a wonderful blog that we used uh, that was sourced through MVPs as well as through uh, our internal supportability and in the product group. And, and a few years ago, we made a decision to consolidate kind of our, our, our blogging and, and documentation strategy. But one of the things we realized is there was a really, really big uh, want slash need still community that was looking to that for kind of similar to the tribal knowledge that you get of those perimeter, I guess, almost mm -hmm. uh, topics that, that might not fall within a, a, a technic article uh, because they're part of the 80-20, they're the 20%, right? And so we actually had this blog. Well, the blog is now back. It is next top. Uh, it is something that we will be not only bringing into the, the Yammer community to really help continue to bolster, but we will be continuing to provide. And so uh, you can take a look at it. It's got a lot of, uh, of uh, historical content, right? Uh, but it's uh, HTTP, aka.ms, which is, you know, the Microsoft redirect, pre redirect uh, slash next stop. And so uh, it, it's really it's really enlightening for those of us that, that remember it from back in the day. I let Jamie talk because he has a, he has a, he has a personal passion about this. Well, there's just there's there's a lot of opportunities that it, as product managers you you we we get into these cases where um, we have to share information out with the community, and, and sometimes we can condense that down into tweets, and sometimes we can um, we can use our you know kind of bigger blogging platform. Um, on blogs.office.com, but a lot of times those are, you know, fairly needy announcements or acquisitions or different things. What NextStop really provides is, is the facility for us to have, you know, very long form, very technically detailed um, kind of expositions of different, of different areas of content um, that may be, you know, sharing, sharing some knowledge, sharing some things that we've found, you know, when we've taken, um, we've taken bits on the road or we're working with pre-release software, um, that that is things that not necessarily fit into support.office.com or not necessarily fit into TechNet, but that are that are things that we can we can kind of get out to the community. Support really loves the the ability to have this mm -hmm. as well because you know there's some there's some cases where 
you know, we'll be able to put a bunch of information into a, into a knowledge base article, into a KB, but we want to expand on that or we want to provide some more kind of guidance for implementation or guidance for operations or planning. Um, and so, you know, I, I remember, um, you know, thinking through how to help people understand how to do split tunneling in a, in a VPN. Um, you know, so the, the idea here is that if you go and set up a VPN, you don't necessarily want to have all the media you know, go through that VPN tunnel. You may just want to have signal go through that VPN tunnel and have media peel out and go straight into edge. And that helps out with latency and it helps out with media quality. But configuring that can be a little goofy on a bunch of different VPN platforms, right? Yeah. So we can use Nextop to go through and actually kind of detail step by step. Hey, here's here's a way to go and do that. Um, you know, we look to the community again to help populate Nextop. So we'll be writing articles, our colleagues in engineering will be writing articles, our colleagues in support will be writing articles, as will MVPs, as will other consultants, as will partners. Um, so if there's, if, you know, if you if you are ready or keeping a blog of of different stuff you're finding in in Skype for Business, and you want to you want to share that with a little bit of a broader audience. You know, feel free to drop us a line, and, and yeah. we'll see you get that onto the calendar. For and you can time. direct message us through Gamer, or or even hit us up on Twitter. Hey, you want a private message? Yeah, absolutely. So there has been some conversation yeah. about this about this little acquisition as well. Yeah. Um, so so you know, one of the things we're going to talk about today all up is, is is our deployment guidance. And really, when I say deployment guidance, is what is our how do you make how do you plan for a path to the cloud? Right. You know, um, any anybody that that knows me on Skype for Business, knows I update my thing, and it's like, you know, path to the cloud. It's like a walk in the woods, right? Well, <laughs> you know, you just, you, there's certain steps and certain certain uh, paths that you want to take versus ones that you don't, like you want to take the one to grandma's house, right? Um, but uh, one of the things, though, that, that Microsoft is really, we, we're all in, right, in the cloud. And, and so one of our big things uh, this week that we announced was actually the acquisition of the technology from uh, Event Zero. And if you're not familiar with who Event Zero is, Event Zero is a provisioning and monitoring and reporting uh, solution that has historically been on uh, on server. And one of the things that we, we did is we, we acquired that underlying technology so that we can start to incorporate that within the cloud as well. So as you start to see the on-prem, the hybrid, and these on, and online deployments really bolstering uh, the the uh, IT Pro tool set. I mean, my, that's really where I spend a lot of my uh, space is within the IT Pro community, either within uh, the tooling or deployment or guidance uh, around things like network that Jamie and I kind of share. So, um, or share passion for, I guess is the easier way. No, I mean, yeah, it's yeah. fair. I mean, there's, there's uh, all of our jobs are all kind of complicated Venn diagrams of, of capabilities. It's not like, it's not like any time a voice function hits the client, I stop and I go, no, it's all Paul stuff. Or, yeah. or any time that, that, you know, <laughs> administration <laughs> capability, yeah. you know, hits, hits the admin console. I'm like, whoa, no, that's no. Sean's job. Yeah. I mean, no. So we, we really do own like, like the Venn diagram is like the 12 <laughs> intersecting circles that, have common space. It's it is really exciting for the for the event zero acquisition, being able to be able to take advantage of their technology, integrate that into Office 365 and be able to have that have it available for everyone. Um, know that, that 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 you know we just had the announcement, so we'll be following up a little bit later on with specifics yeah. on dates and that sort of thing. Is that right? Yeah, it was specific on dates and what our roadmap and what we look like. Right now, we're just announcing, hey, that was part of our our New Year's resolution, so to speak, was to, <laughs> uh, as as our first acquisition of, uh, and they they uh, made a comment that it's the first acquisition Microsoft's made in the new year. Oh my goodness! Wow. Yeah. All yeah. right. Well, we're getting started in a good uh, in a good path. Right. Thinking about deployment. Thinking about Skype for business. So on that topic, um, what we've got is a, is a, is a presentation. Um, I'm going to be helping to run the presentation. We're going to switch over to that now, and then uh, we'll kind of go you know back and forth between the slides and the video. I apologize if this isn't super uh, super produced. well produced because I will be doing it here as I'm having the conversation with uh, with Sean. It's one of the great things about the Skype meeting broadcast is that you have the capability to do this, or you've got just. Have a little workstation here in my office. Have a little camera here in my office. Um, also, my colleague Paul in another office is looking after the Bing Pulse. So yeah. you may see on the right-hand side of your screen um, some Bing Pulse information. There'll be questions that get that get fired off. 
there's a sentiment there. Um, feel free to use that, and we'll be um, and I'll be checking in with Paul here over I am again another great game Bill. He's got business there you um, go. to uh, to go and, and find out a little bit of what uh, what y'all are thinking about um, about our content. So let's go ahead and get started with deployment guidance for Skype for Business. Excellent. So I'm going to kind of take the lead here and let let uh, Jamie ask some commentary, but. Really, our deployment guidance is about path to the cloud. You know, uh, we've got a variety a community we've known through Bing Pulse. We have people that have attended before, some that are on-prem, online, some that are in hybrid. Really, what we, what we understand is, you know, you, there's a very large uh, community that is going to uh, have been on-prem. And there's a large community that is online. The, the big piece, though, is really with the announcement of our uh, new services of PSTN conferencing and Cloud PBX and PSTN calling right now in the US, it really enables companies to uh, to plan for their path to the cloud. Really, uh, we're now enabling all the feature sets that we historically had on-prem now in the cloud. And so there's going to be a transition there where the companies that have on-premise want to get to the cloud and they're going to be in a hybrid state for a little while. So what we're going to talk today is kind of what, what our guidance around that path is. So um, if we if we take it two more slides, the next one, if you bring me past, so I think everybody is aware of our definition. <laughs> um, one of the things I want to talk about is, and, and I don't know if everybody's seen this though, is really what our availability is. We know we've talked about it. We thought we'd give you a visual of it. So the first one is, is that Skype meeting broadcast, the tool we're using, it's globally available right now. It is, as a matter of fact, globally available right now. There is something that's important though, for, uh, for folks to realize when it comes to the global availability of Skype meeting broadcasts, going to talk to give uh, Sean an opportunity here to uh, to, to, to take a drink. Um, a Skype coffee. Meeting... <laughs> <laughs> They're hilarious. Skype meeting broadcasts is available to everybody, but it is by default turned off. Um, and the reason it's by default turned off is that some of the components of Skype meeting broadcasts um, have some intersection with the EU model clauses. And so we, we need to have that, the enablement of Skype meeting broadcast be a, an intentional act by, uh, by end users. I know I've got a couple questions on Yammer of exactly what does that mean and, and kind of what areas of the Azure stuff and, and, and the EU model clauses and can you dive into that a little bit more. And I am in the process of, uh, of, of kind of diving into that um, with some of our, some of our engineers and, and still working on that and definitely coming back with, um, with an answer here in a little bit. Um, but yeah, absolutely. So Skype meeting broadcast and then PSTN conferencing. Yeah, so PSTN conferencing. Um, one of the things I did before we did that, one thing I want to make sure that people understand within Skype meeting broadcast is if you are an on-premise customer, you still can take care of it. Oh, absolutely. That, right. So yeah. it, this is really that great hybrid story of, hey, I'm not willing to, I, I don't want to move all of my services. I finally figured out my, my on-premise deployment for EV and everything. Hey, I'm going to, I will plan for the cloud, but I'm not moving everything right now. But I do want to take advantage of Skype for Business, and we can talk a little bit about that in a little bit. PSTN conferencing, right? So PSTN conferencing is, uh, is available for purchase in 15 countries. What that means is, is that if your if your tenant is in one of those 15 countries, and you'll see a slide in a minute that shows those 15 countries, you can buy it. But it also means that you can enable it in over 40, uh, it's what, 45 countries right now, that you actually have dial-in numbers. That So if I happen to, to be able to purchase it in one country, but I've got an office in another that I can't purchase it, that's okay. They can still use that dial in and we'll show you what that looks like. That's absolutely right. And, and Sean nailed the number. So there's 45 different countries where we have um, numbers available for people to use to dial into their meetings. Some of those numbers, um, most of those numbers were all available um, on December the 1st. A handful of those countries came a little bit later and then we slid into our holiday freeze period where we don't want to touch anything on the service and want to keep that service up and running kind of through the holiday period. Now that we're through the holiday freeze, we're rehydrating the service with numbers, with both new numbers for the existing regions and numbers for the regions that, that we just didn't have a chance to get into. India is one of those. And so I know the Indian number pool, if it, if it hasn't been done this week, it will be very early next week that we'll have those numbers up and running. Excellent. Um, one of the things, though, also to, to, to really understand is, is the value of what PST and conferencing can bring. Um, you know, the, the fact is, is a lot of companies pay for conferencing services 
And they then have now segregated those two worlds. And so by enabling PST and conferencing, you really are expanding that meeting conference where our on-premise customers have potentially been using this for years to really see the value. You now We now are enabling that within the cloud. So for our cloud customers, this is a great, hey, next step to really uh, you know, minimize potential uh, vendor, vendor loads as well as, as optimize for meetings. Excellent. Absolutely. Hey, real quick, um, note from Paul on the on the Bing Poll side. We fired off six questions. Love to be able to get your responses. So um, as you're as you're listening to us and as you're checking out the slides, um, please don't hesitate to to go and um, and 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 fire off um, and fire off on answers on all the Bing polls because um, we definitely want to get your guys's um, guys ideas of, of of who you are. Um, what your what your interests are, and that helps us make these broadcasts better. So, yeah. quick plug for the Big Pulse. Go ahead and um and, and get on those as we're uh, as we're talking through this. Okay, excellent. So, <clears throat> Cloud PBX. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to very quickly touch on it because we talk more about it in a bit. Okay. And and I spent too much time on PSD and conferencing because I have a whole conversation about that in a minute. <laughs> but really, it's Cloud PBX is available worldwide. This enables you for online users to have PBX functionalities based out of cloud users. Is that the the? Yeah, the absolutely. <clears throat> when you use when a, when a user is home at Office 365, um, you have the ability to add that license either to your E1 or E3 subscription, or it comes with your E5 subscription. But Cloud PBX gives you the calling capabilities and the administrative functions. It does not provide you the PSTN side of things, right? And so that's where you got the, these two next points. Yeah, and so the two next points are are PSTN calling, which is in the U.S. right now, and will be expanding geos as as you know we make it through the regulatory uh, challenges. I mean, that's one of the biggest things is that the, the telecommunications industry is highly regulated, right? And it's different, and it's different every everywhere. Country. <laughs> everywhere, and they have different tax authorities in every country. It's great. Yeah, <laughs> so you know where you you think, hey, you know, we're going to build this and scale, and and we're it's a uh, scalable, repeatable process. It's a little different with PSD and Kali. But <laughs> for those countries that can't take advantage of that right now, we have the ability to connect to your on-premise uh, thing. We're going to talk a little bit about that. We talk about PSD and connectivity in just a minute. Very good. So I won't I won't jump in on that. No. That sounds great. Okay. I, I will give you full ranks to be able to talk about PSD and connectivity. Excellent. 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 So so uh, here's here's the general guidance that we want to give. So it's similar to rolling out anything, right? You're going to roll out something so that you have the greatest uh, success. Think of it from change. You never do two changes in an environment at once because you never know what that impact's going to be, right? The best practice is do one change at a time. So ours is, hey, start with one region, okay? So you start with one region. The next is, hey, then once you've started with that region, so let's say that you have, have a, a region, you want to enable that region for meetings all up. Okay, that means that everybody can use Skype for business within that region uh, for web meetings, online meetings as well. Really, we want you want to enable that PSD and conferencing. The next piece to this, though, talks about uh, Cloud PBX and, and what you're going to do for that. And one of the pieces we want to address here is the current feature set within uh, Cloud PBX is that it is really focused on the information worker. If you think of 80% of the user's capabilities that are, that are used, are you know transfer, park, hold, right, call forwarding, all the stuff that you use on a daily basis that typically is now transferred to the cell phone too, right? Like the ability to use those those core functions exists within Cloud PBX today. Absolutely true. Yeah, that that is that is a that's our kind of initial baseline of capability that we've come out with with Cloud PBX. So obviously, uh, you know, underneath that is all the infrastructure and all the facility that we had to build out. In order to in order to bring the this initial set of enterprise voice capabilities up to the cloud, now that we've done that, now of course all of our engineering work instead of it being bifurcated across both features and and kind of fundamental infrastructure, now all of our go forward work is against that is against that set of features. So um, we're actually seeing a, a much kind of more rapid set of set of features that are being planned by our engineering as we go forward. And I know I've got a question from the from the audience on, on kind of what that looks like in the roadmap. And I yeah. expect to be able to get to that at the end, towards the end of our broadcast. So um, the, the the core key behind this though, really is to, to get started, you need to move to exchange online, right? 
So uh, that you know, make that make start making that move as part of your plan. The reason is it enables a lot of those key voice features like voicemail. It also enables the the capability for uh, two factor auth using ADAL, things along those lines that really are the key enablement pieces. Uh, as you move meetings to the cloud, we're going to talk a little bit more about that. You know, we we really talk about. You can buy it in those 15 countries, and, and it actually, we'll talk about that literally in depth in just a second. And then the last is, is around Cloud PBX, and that is, hey, if you're not set up right now within the US and you want to do this, you can potentially connect to your telco for uh, direct connectivity to on-premise PSTA. So why don't we kick to the next slide, really, because that really is, is this. This is about how you choose that region. And, and the reason that this is important is, is because that one of the things that we want to make sure is that we um, that you build your plan for your best TCO. Okay, so if you happen to not have uh, not have infrastructure in a region, that would be a great place to go to the cloud first. Great example: technology company based here in the U.S. has two data centers in the U.S. for redundancy. However, they have EMEA operations they move their EMEA people to the cloud first. Other option is it's your greatest concentration of users, right? So this is really you having to take a look at this. And the key is right now, if you're in online, great, you're there, let's do it. If you don't have anything, move that region online right now. If you're on server, move those users to the cloud, start taking advantage of that, potentially reduce that impact of that footprint that you currently got. Absolutely, and so there's also a, a set of, a, a kind of lens here as well, around um, if, if we're, we're thinking about cases where um, customers have both server and they've got some, some, some of the online pieces as well, right? Yeah. And so that's the chart that you've got, you've got there down at the bottom is, is it's a kind of walk us through a little bit of what, of, of how to think through that side of the, of the house as well. Yeah, so, so the big one is, is remember, you're gonna start with planning that first region, right? So start with that single region or if you're a single region. The, the other region is really, it's a similar, it, it's our way to kind of give you an example of how you would plan out, right? That gives you the ability to deploy those first couple of, uh, that first region, make sure that it's working successful, make sure that adoption's up, right? And and really look at it at what your current deployment, which is that top line, right? Are you deployed? Are you in, in mm -hmm. uh, server? Are you online? online yeah. But really is, is starting to roll out those features later on, right? Because you want to make sure that you get a single region set up. Even at Microsoft in, in our IT, uh, in our MSIT deployments, we do this as well. We'll start with a single region, make sure that that region is, is running well, uh, that user adoption's there, that the calls are healthy, that uh, users understand what, what they've now picked up and what features they don't have or do have. Um, long before we move to that next the next phase and so as you build this out you can actually use that secondary line as to sell as, as very similar to build your project plan mm -hmm. okay mm -hmm. yeah makes sense okay. very good so let's talk a little bit about about meeting so if you want to go to the next slide uh oh this one this one's the good one i, I i'm i'm doing this off memory and so jamie's laughing at me so sean's doing great though it is this is just a key thing that we've got uh, that we, i mean i don't know i feel like in every one of our broadcasts and every time i talk with customers i i, I feel a little bit like a broken record like i definitely pound the 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 need <clears throat> of the network and ensuring that the, that the network is uh is up and ready and and you know i'm gonna i'm gonna flip back here to the uh to the slide so that uh so that everyone so that everyone sees this the network assessment is just absolutely key right yes and 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 the piece with network assessment that is uh that that i really want to bring to fruition is you're moving to the cloud it's it's a different type of network assessment one of the things and we're going to do a whole conversation about how to plan for internal lands and things like that for networking but really your network assessment historically has been a point in time and it's not about point in time anymore it's about truly understanding the ecosystem of your network and so it's about not only your assessment but ongoing audits of the health of your network right and so one of the things that you want to make sure that you're doing is that not only is your network ready but you're planning for what things like internet ingress and egress right or in the case of where we strongly recommend if you're a large corporation and you've got a lot of voice traffic 
you might want to, we strongly recommend Azure Express Route for those large companies. And the reason is, is because that is the way that you ensure voice, right? Absolutely, absolutely right. And, you know, so um, one of the things that we that we work pretty hard to do coming up to uh, to 12.1, knowing that Azure Express Route was going to be a, a really kind of key scenario, is that we built out a, a very detailed set of documentation. It's available on support.office.com. I'll have a link to it on the, I know I've linked to it on the Ammer a, a, a few different times. I can, um, I can put up another one in there that really kind of details through using a case study of exactly the steps that you need to go through in order to think through, you know, what's my bandwidth look like? What does my internet egress look like? Um, how do I want to have that traffic prioritized over the express route link? Um, and then um, taking that up to your carrier, taking that up to your operator partner, um, and 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 working with them to make sure that that um, that this traffic is set up and that the express route link is um, is set up and running live. It's you know we always we always say the express route is strongly recommended. Clearly, um, we don't want to you know block any you know, pilots or small deployments. Or but once your deployment starts to get up into a, the right the right size, um, it just it really makes sense to have an express route in there. And right? it makes a difference, right? It's like the same thing. It's the same conversation that you and I would have with an on premise customer about. QoS policies on their network, right? You just want to ensure that voice is there, yeah. and voice gets there without an issue. And that that you know, one of the things that that you know, we talk about the internet superhighway. Express route kind of gives you that HOV link, <laughs> right? Um, it gives that prioritization. So I think I think one of the things that we want to talk about a little bit is specifically about meetings, though. Yeah, right? absolutely, and. and Go ahead. No, I, I just I wanted to I wanted to interject. I, I've got a little bit of feedback from Paul on the Bing Pulse. Paul asked on the Bing Pulse, um, if you could choose, kind of what's more valuable to me, PSTN calling or PSTN conferencing? And of the replies, um, over half of them said, "Don't make me choose." Both of them are are really super valuable. We succeed. I know, right? <laughs> no, this, this is great. Like this is, this is fantastic. Um, so yeah, let's talk about let's talk about meetings here. Folks are seeing the slide. Excellent. So uh, one of the things that that you can see here. Remember we said, hey, once you enable that region, go all meetings all in, right? Yep. So that's online meetings, web, video conferencing, the whole bit using the client rich experiences. But for those companies that that still have that huge reliance on, you know, they all know their five digit pen, right? <laughs> I can tell you, I remember I used to work for a telco before this and. We all had our dial in for our pen. And the running joke was, okay, which bridge are we meeting on? Right? Because <laughs> everybody had their own conferencing bridge. And it's like, oh, we'll meet on, you know, 4009. And we'd all dial in. But the, the thing that's interesting is one of the things we noticed, even at Microsoft, is as we enabled, we moved away from said bid carrier's bridge and moved to Skype for business for our conferencing. One of the things we saw is we actually saw increase in meetings year over year of 20% without increase of users, without like massive restrictions on travel. Like we, we had the normal restrictions that most companies do. But one of the things that we saw is we also saw a increase in the rich client and a decrease in the dial-in conferencing. It's so interesting. It's so interesting. Just the fact that it's that much richer of an experience, mm -hmm. you find that folks start to use it more and more. And and it's it's true. Like, I mean, just within our own team, obviously, we try to you know try to as much as possible you know facilitate the use of the product. You know we're all on early versions of the product, so we are we all try to give feedback to the engineers on you know what we're finding in the early versions of the product. Um, but it's it's just it really does um, it really does help engage and 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 bring together you know in in a lot of cases diverse groups that we have we have meetings with when we're able to say, hey, we're having a meeting, it's gonna be in this conference room and it's also gonna be available over, over Skype yeah. as well. And, and it's just, that's just the natural thing that we do. And it's just, it, it's fantastic because there are plenty of times that, you know, we all have busy lives, you know, we, we both of us have kids, you know, there are plenty of times that we'll, you know, we'll get the call in the middle of the day, oh, you know, your kid threw up everywhere and you gotta roll home. Um, yes. and, and, and then you can just, you can do that, you can take care of what you need to take care of, and then and you can kind of pick up and, and just be attending all of those meetings yeah. as you need, as you're also taking care of things on the on the personal front. And, and, and to go back to this, if you wanna go back to the slide for just a second, um, one There's of the so things about you, though is that, that this really breaks up. That middle box is about where you buy, where you can buy it right now. Yep. And so if you're in one of those 15 countries and your tenant's there, 
go buy my big call action go buy skype for business psd and conferencing either e5 or the add-on to e3 but go and do this because what you're going to see is that you're this is going to alleviate a lot of the pain that you might have within having bifurcated uh solutions one where you know they're using the big carrier bridge where people are dialing in and then other people that are using your meeting solution but then there's all those dialing options those main countries that you dial in that people have access to dial in so as we said go go to the meetings start that with that region first get them going and then and then you can then you've really got the capability to utilize that dialing excellent the next piece to this really is where Jamie has been touting for for months, right? Cloud Which is PBX, Cloud baby. PBX. <laughs> so I'm gonna I'm gonna give the high level, and then I'm gonna let you know Jamie talk. Sounds good. Because he loves it, loves the topic, right? <laughs> you know, when we do the IT Pro Tools, I'll be all over it, right? So <laughs> one of the things, though, the big key is is that hey, light up your information workers first, right? And the reason that we say light up your information workers, we've mentioned, is that it's a feature set, but that's the majority of most companies' users, anyways, right? Mm -hmm. um, the other the other piece to this is is that you've got two options. One is the PSTN calling. The other is connectivity to your on-premise PSTN connectivity. What we call cloud connectivity. That's right. Yes. On-premises PSTN connectivity. Absolutely. And so, why don't you talk a little bit about what that is? And, and... yeah, definitely. So, <clears throat> well, you can see you can see here on the slide. Um, this is a you know a high level abstraction, right? Of um, of using server software to be able to connect between Office 365 and Skype for Business Cloud PBX and your existing on-premises PSTN interface. Um, you know, we've been we've been doing this for a really long time. We've like my kind of my first big introduction into into um, this stuff was back in 2007 when we rolled down to San Francisco. We launched Office Communication Server 2007, and um, we were plugging you know in that software into a Cisco, into a Navai, and into a Nortel um, using using three different gateways. And then, you know, with the Nortel, we were using direct SIP. So like, we've been doing this for a while. We're super comfortable with these, with these scenarios. Whether you have an analog circuit, whether you have a, um, whether you have a, a session border controller, where you have a circuit coming in from an IP, IP telephony service provider, using SIP trunking, um, where you have a, a, a Cisco or a Siemens or an Alcatel switch, um, all of these all these different scenarios are um, are still supported. Um, the lights just went off, and so Sean's gonna gonna wave a little bit. Perfect timing. As soon as I switch to video, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> Maybe we're back. I know, right? <laughs> but the idea is that you can you can use this software to be able to have calls that your cloud PBX users, users that are homed in Office three sixty five. Those cloud PBX users, when they go to make a phone call or they receive a phone call, it's going to be trunked through this set of software that's running on premises, that's implementing this on premises PSTN connectivity. Yeah. Um, now, there's two different ways that you can do this. Um, one way is that you can use your existing server deployment, right? Yes. So, everybody that has Skype for Business Server, everybody that has Link Server 2013, even, even the previous release, you can do this today. It's just a matter of connecting that implementation up to Office 365 and then flipping a couple switches to Office 365 and you've got the topology established. Yeah. So it's very, very straightforward to do. Um, the, other, the other path that will be available in the near future is to use a set of slimmed down software that we're calling the Cloud Connector Edition. So effectively, this is a new and different edition of the Skype for Business server software that just does this cloud connectivity piece. That's cool. Yeah, absolutely. So no MCUs, no um, no you know kind of heavyweight registrars, mm. like all of those all of those scenarios we've pulled out. We're actually engineering this thing to be just for the functions that we need to go in and connect and communicate up to the cloud. So so just the edge pieces, mediation, and then a little bit of routing to be able to have those have those interoperate. And we're packaging those up as VMs. Oh, that's great. That sounds like you know, perfect solution for somebody who wants to get started right away. Absolutely. And we intended to have it be available for folks to get started right away on 12.1. When we had this up and running in a few of our early customer sites, um, we found that there was some additional work that we needed to do. 
And um, we had the opportunity to either ship it and we kind of get people up and running with it and then and then kind of come back at it later or hold it back for a little while and then and then do that work and then and then be able to uh, be able to bring it out um, afterwards. And the latter is what we chose to do. So and, it is and then and, and by doing that, didn't we like basically found major improvements that, or not improvements but efficiencies, right? Yeah, absolutely. We we're able to like in our initial design, we we're thinking, oh, we want to have two host systems, one outside the firewall, one inside the firewall, we were able to collapse that into one. We were looking at um, at having a bunch of different VMs operating. We've been able to collapse that number down. We're actually um, doing a bunch more perf testing internally so we can get a much better um, sense of, of exactly um, how many how many MIPS and cycles are necessary for this role. Um, just because it's different. It's not, it's not running the kind of full complement of capabilities for Skype for Business. So it, it behooves us to go in and ask the question like, well, what does the scale really look like? Because we want, we want folks to be able to take advantage of this on, on kind of both the lower end. So just thinking like, hey, I've got a I've got an E1's worth of traffic. You know, what's the kind of lowest end, you know, system that I can put this on all the way up into cases where, you know, customers of, you know, I've got a I've got a big deployment. I've got, you know, thousands and thousands of users. I want to stack up a bunch of these boxes to be able to do this do this intermediation. Um, we're working on this right now, and we think that I think that in this quarter I'll have the I'll have the um, dates from engineering on when we're going to have this um, have this be available. Nothing to announce right now, but it is still yeah. in progress and it's still looking really good. So thanks for the opportunity. No, no worries, and, and I'm glad we got the got a chance to get that out there. We've got a large online community that I know is chomping at the. In bench. fact, eighty six percent of the folks that are watching right now and rep and responding to the Bing Pulse say that they are the majority in the cloud, 14% are hybrid, and in our audience right now who has replied to the Bing Pulse, none are exclusively on-premises. Which I think is fascinating. That is, because last time I did this, when we did the E5 recap with BJ, who you can go back out and watch it on, on YouTube, it, it was 50% online, 50%, it was, <laughs> sorry, it was 38% and 38% online and server with like, 16% in the middle that was hybrid. That's interesting. So it, it's, it's really interesting, interesting that we're picking up a different uh, different demographic Yeah. Um, based yeah. on what we're talking about. Yeah. So Very good. Um, yeah, so one of the things that I thought, I mean, we're kind of coming to the close. We don't have a, a ton, ton to talk about uh, for finishing up. One thing I did want to just touch base in Skype meeting broadcast, we're not going to, we don't need to share and there's no slides to it specifically. But the key is, is one of the biggest pieces people are asking me, hey, how do I get my on-premises environment? Now, most of you are online or hybrid, um, but is actually, it's, a, it's through federation, right? And so it actually, through the on-premise, and now that I know that there's mostly people answering or not on-prem, so, but uh, if those guys are on uh, listening and they're not, not actually participating in the Pulse, which is fine, um, it's actually through setting up as a hosting partner, a hosting provider in your Skype for Business topology. It's actually all on TechNet on how to do it, but it's really about making sure Azure AD is, is, uh, is syncing and you've got their sync in place, and then you use a federated uh, a federation to really bring your client into the broadcast meeting. So I've got a confession. I, I, I messed up on the question that was being asked by the big pulse. Oh. <laughs> the question actually was, where do you see your deployment three years? Oh, 86% online, 13% hybrid. Wow. I, I'm actually, I, I'm a little surprised at that. I was expecting a lot more hybrid. hybrid. Yeah. I was expecting a lot more hybrid. I guess, you know, we're never we're never going to turn our back on the server. We're never going to turn our back on the hybrid deployment. Like that is, we think that that is just going to be such a such a significant piece of of, of the market. We think that there's a yeah. lot of reasons that people are going to want to take advantage of our cloud, especially for super expensive options, comp, uh, features computationally, like Skype meeting broadcast. Super expensive That's computationally, it. right? Yep. To be able to do this stuff, um, and so it makes sense. Throw it up to our cloud. The, the ability that we've got to be able to manage phone numbers and to and to be able to, to be able to provide the kind of global capabilities around 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 PSTN calling totally makes sense throw it up to the cloud but I expect that there's going to be a few a lot of instances where customers are going to want to have certain features and functions running in hybrid and running on premises and you're going to have a hybrid yeah, technology there totally it's it, it, 
I don't know. I'm, I'm feeling pretty good that customers are going like, no, yeah, like we believe in your cloud and we, we I, I dig your direction. I may be reading a little bit too much into that, but like, I, I think I think if you think of what the, and one of the sessions we're going to talk about in the coming weeks is actually, you know, the evolution of the IT Pro. And, you know, we, we sit here and joke about it. It used to be about spindles and bits and bytes and, and command line. And it's now much more about like business value, understanding how different organizations are and knowing your dependencies and things like that, which we'll talk in depth about. But, you know, I think that that's where we're seeing it. We're seeing the shift is that people have belief that we've now delivered voice in the cloud and conferencing in the cloud. This is their capability, our capability to really prove prove that we can go that direction wholeheartedly yeah. what they want. Yeah. Did you think that the PBX cool. functionality, like the fun core functionality within PBXs, hasn't changed in a long time? <laughs> well, yeah. Right? <laughs> it's, it's the core functionality. So the ability for us to continue to build features within that space, other than you know, limitations of of uh, of time space continuum, right? <laughs> The speed of light right, still yeah. is still, still something that Microsoft Research is working on. Yeah, <laughs> you know, you know, with the, the the new new movie that came out, you know, we don't have hyper the hyperdrive. <laughs> <laughs> no, the I, you know, there there's it, it is really interesting though. There is so much that we have the opportunity to do, and I, I look at I look at just you know bringing PowerShell into the management of of the phone of cloud PBX and PSDM calling. I mean, just just that little step of being able to have the opportunity to, to search the phone database, to, 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 do, to do a query based on location, grab a set of numbers, automatically assign those to users, have all that be scriptable, have all that yep. be just, just able to be kicked off from any kind of backend process that you, that you want. Is is incredibly powerful. Yeah. Um, and yeah, no, and it's, it's, it is. And, and it's, we're giving that capability every single day that we release more and more. Yeah, right? oh, that's so exciting. So, did have a question from Yammer. Um, ben West wants to know about the availability date of auto attendant in Cloud PBX. Um, that is probably, no, I think definitely, that is the, the one feature that I hear about more than, than, than all the others. Like, I mean, yeah, obviously people are very interested in what we're doing about and, you know, expanding PSTN services into Europe and exactly what countries, when are they coming out, when are you releasing that? And yes, that is in progress. Yes, we're figuring that out. We have wonderful conversations with regulatory and tax authorities on a very frequent basis. Um, that's all happening. And on the feature standpoint, auto attendant is, is, the, yeah. is the thing that consistently people are coming and saying, I can move to your stuff wholeheartedly. I could do it tomorrow. I just need to have a system to be able to answer the dang phone when no one's here and have that and have that kind of that 1-800 yeah. number. Yeah, 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 exactly that, that, that front end. And so it feels good to me to know that that's the that's one of the kind of first big things that we're building in the in the, the kind of next set of features that are coming out from um, from Cloud PDX. Again, our, our engineering is working through scrubbing through all these plans and we're really kind of figuring out like what are the set of features that we need to come up with initially? What are the set of features that can come a little bit later? Again, because it's the cloud, there will be one day that you will log into the, the Skype for Business Admin Console and there will be a new tab there and it will just, you click on the new tab and you configure it and it's just up and running. And so we can we can have these features just slipstreamed in yep. and be available to folks who are subscribing to the, to the without, service. Without having to go and, you know, roll and take downtime and, you know, you know, that's, I, 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 you know, it's, it's the love and the hate of the cloud, right? <laughs> it's the fact that you, you, and, and when we talk about this, it's because we're in this early release bit. So we get stuff all day long. Like we'll get a new feature that, that is, you know, five, six months from when you'll get it, we'll get it because it's constantly updating. And so these are the things that we were able to bring. But one of the things that's really nice is, is by bringing this to the cloud, one of the things Microsoft has done is actually brought a couple of different options into how customers can can set Great themselves point. into the different rings, Great right? Point. Yeah, different absolutely. Release, absolutely. release cadences. So, you know, we do understand the pains of, of what it means to have change in an environment. Mm -hmm. We also understand there are customers that want to take that that those bits as soon and as fast as possible, where others want a little bit more control. That's a great um that's a really great point. I'm just I'm chuckling because I just I just got an IM from uh 
from Paul that said that the that the current question right now in the Bing Pulse is is asking about the the Panthers Seahawks game. Oh, uh, <laughs> my my question is, you know, you guys think this is funny. However, I built the Bing Pulse, and he's in my Bing Pulse adding questions. Right oh now. yeah, oh, oh that's all we're like. So so Paul, k- kudos for you for figuring out how oh, to add goodness. questions to oh, the Pulse. That's awesome and, and uh, excellent. No, so so he totally just totally just threw me on what I was going to say around uh, around the early availability. It is key, you know. We we definitely want to ensure that 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 you folks, largely from IT, are have the ability to control the service and have the ability to control the experience for your end users. We take that very seriously. When 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 I talk about hey, new features, you know, could just kind of slip through and poof, they're available. Obviously, auto attend it isn't just going to show up magically yeah. configure itself. <laughs> Assign a phone number, and then all of a sudden, it's a phone number that's that's talking to your business, right? Like there, yeah. there, there will be a step of configuration that's required. Totally. You know, assign that number, turn it on, and you know, activate it, and then have that you know start start managing uh, start managing calls for your front desk. Like so, and but it just it just feels good to know that that we're we're kind of aligned that that folks are folks are really looking forward to that feature. And that's a, one of the first kind of initial features that we're really looking to bring out. And I think it'll be it'll be one of the the kind of first um, kind of big opportunities for us outside of conferencing to be able to do media services yeah. in the cloud too. Totally. Yeah. No, so that's it's a big it's a, it's another kind of big foundational opportunity then for us to be able to do lots of fun stuff. Totally. That we'll get to talk about not a future broadcast. I think this is the longest broadcast. This is the long I'm sitting here looking at it. <laughs> by the way, so as we've talked in, in previous ones, and if you're new to this, so Jamie by by happenstance is uh is, is a diehard EV telephony guy. He has five handsets on his desk, not including his mobile phone or his <laughs> headset. It's true. And, it's not and the longest. advantage is is that I can see three of the clocks, as you can see the one back here. And so I'm sitting here watching, I'm like, wow. We typically are 30 to 35 minutes, and we're now at 52 minutes. So um, we obviously had a lot to talk about. It's a brand new year. It is a brand new year. We're obviously really excited that you're here with us. Um, we're excited to be able to continue on this uh, this the, the, this broadcast series. Um, please don't hesitate. Come on to Yammer. Tell us about what you want to hear about. Um, yeah, you know, we want to have these be valuable for you. Um, we like to kind of break it up where, you know, Sean and I were talking about some stuff that's going on in the industry. We talked about a topic. We you know, brought in some of the feedback. Um, we like to be able to, to, be able to do that, um, that, sort of, that sort of model. And within that, there's lots of opportunities for you guys to participate. Totally. Very good. Excellent. Well, I would like to say again, Happy New Year. And uh, I think uh, we shall... Uh, Call it a day. And go Hawks! Go Hawks! Thanks, everybody.